I I have to say I had so much fun watching this movie. The tone and the textures and the neon colors. It was so unhinged, but in the <laughs> sweet. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yes, I I found myself just absolutely falling for the characters. And I truly loved getting a monster movie, a Frankenstein movie, but kind of from the female perspective. So I'm going to start with you, Diablo, this time and, and ask you just about creating these characters in this story and what the difference was for you when you decided to 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 make this. Um, so this was something that I was really passionate about from the get go. I was really excited about this idea because for years I had entertained this concept of um, a living girl and a dead boy falling in love. And I was never really sure when I was going to do it. And the pandemic hit, obviously the world ground to a halt and I was just sort of sitting at home with my kids and I thought, you know, it would be a great escape from this. Like I'm gonna write that zombie romantic comedy. And so I started writing this and um, just being in the world was such a, a fun escape. So yeah, I'm just it's it's thrilling that we actually made this movie. It still blows and, my mind. <laughs> and Zelda for you, creatively, what kind of doors does an incredible incredibly rich story like this open for you? I mean, especially when you have something on the page that's already a period piece but it has fantastic elements. I mean, it immediately opens up a lot of wonderful things for production design for cinematography, for costume. I mean, even Megan and I were picking through some of Lisa's outfits are actually our costume designer's outfits from when she was Lisa's age. There's something so great about that. You get to leave the reality you're currently in. And I think a lot of that, that's what, especially for me, but I know for a lot of other people, that's what escapism is in cinema. Yeah. Is you walk through those doors, you have your popcorn bucket and you leave your current space. Um, so that was very important in this. Uh, I have to ask, because the second I saw the Trip to the Moon poster in Lisa's bedroom, I was like, oh, like, what is the significance of that film for both of you? Because it seemed to play a pretty big role in the film. Oh, I just think it's such, uh, just the, the images from that film are so romantic and so legendary and just dreamy. And for me, that's just the, the essence of, um, of kind of a fantasy romance, I guess, is that, that little movie. And originally in the script, Lisa is written as this huge film nerd. And yeah. there were jokes about the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and things like that as well. And it allowed me to explore the idea of what she dreams about and her fantasy. Um, and that, you know, that film was the beginning of cinema exploring stuff that we had not done as humans even. Like that was long before we went to the moon, but they were still sending up rocket ships. And yeah. So I, I think it was a, a wonderful way to pay homage to where fantasy came from, where science fiction came from, and cinema in general. But I liked thinking that that's what Lisa would dream like. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to wrap here, but I do want to say real quick, I so loved how Lisa's character got bigger and bigger and just seemed to fill more space as the story went. And I wish we had time to talk about that because I absolutely adored it. Uh, but thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it.